This is Glen Campbell, coming to you from Henry David Thoreau's cabin in Concord, Massachusetts. This is the actual site of his original cabin in the 1800s where he lived for two years. I'll show you around. So this is the cabin site. Proof right there. And we know it's the site because this is the stones uh, from his hearth are here. I actually uh, learned to swim in this lake, Walden Pond. It's down here. Back in the 1960s when I was growing up, this wasn't really any significant uh, pond. It was just a pond. It was the only pond in the area where you could uh, swim. So um, kids like us were, uh, were bussed in from my town and I learned to swim on a dock at one end of, end of Walden Pond. So you can say that I bathed here as a child. This was Thoreau's temporary home. Uh, it, is the, it is the permanent shrine now to all things Thoreau. He was undoubtedly one of America's great philosophers. And like all great prophets, you can interpret him just about any way you want. There's uh, personal economy, there's environmentalism, there's civil disobedience. Basically anything you want to believe, you can find some words of Thoreau to justify your position. He's a very quotable author, totally ignored during his lifetime, but uh, a century later we, we rediscovered him. Uh, not all of his his legacy is good. Uh, we have civil disobedience. He probably taught a, many generations how to, be, how to conduct civil disobedience. He probably the father of ineffective social protest. As we know, he spent one night in jail for refusing to pay his poll taxes because he objected to the Spanish-American War. Ever since then, people have sort of been inspired by by Thoreau to engage in ineffective protests, you know, marching on things, refusing to, uh, to do things, and actually not causing any uh, change in society whatsoever. I uh, recall uh, Ted Kaczynski, uh, the Unabomber, turned out to be living in a cabin in the Montana woods that looks remarkably like Thoreau's cabin. You've got to believe that he was inspired in his civil disobedience by Thoreau. So whatever Thoreau, belie Thoreau believed, it can be twisted around to anything you want. And uh, like the words of the Bible, you can use it to justify just about anything. There's only one thing about Thoreau that, that really appeals to me, that really uh, has attached to my soul after bathing in these waters. And that's his views on economy, on a personal economy. He came here to Walden Pond to, to get away from society, to, uh, to enjoy his own thoughts. And he did it in the most economical way possible. And, and if you read, of course, Walden, you, you find out exactly how many nails he used in the construction of his cabin. But what's lasting about him is that we find uh, in our own lives, that possessions, his notion of possessions really is appropriate. The more possessions you own, like what you say, what, uh, the, uh, what happens in Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. the more your life is burdened. His, his uh, message was that people are possessed by their possessions and that you own something, you don't merely own it, it owns you, it controls you. He was trying to get to the, uh, the base of life. He was trying to live on the minimum. He said that you could live very comfortably in a railroad box, in a coffin-sized box, just some place to sleep in. And he, uh, unlike many other people, actually wanted to test it in real life. Experiment didn't last very long, two years, but the ideas are still sound. 
all around Walden Pond, just over the ridge, there are big expensive houses, colonial, colonial houses. They re retail now for about a million dollars. And just being close to Walden improves your property values. So Thoreau certainly benefited the local homeowners here on Concord by, by increasing their property values. And they all come here believing in some, something that Thoreau did. But the, the big houses are not Thoreau. Thoreau says, live with the minimum that you need. Yes, you need some things to survive, but don't go beyond that because every bit that you go beyond that, you're burdening yourself. If you own a big home, you have to maintain that home. You have to, uh, to maintain all its systems. You have to mow the lawn. You have to do all these things. And apart from the home, the big home costing more, the big home is far more inefficient. And essentially you spend the rest of your life in a Martha Stewart world where you're maintaining this home. That's not Thoreau. Whatever Thoreau was, that's not him. He's all about economy. And in the later part of my life, I've really found, found an attachment to that, that I want to cut off, cut out all these things that are non-essential. Not just because they cost money, but because they're a drain on the things that I really want to do. If you live in a cabin in the woods, or the urban equivalent of a cabin in the woods, you have a lot more resources to use for other things, to use for meaningful things other than maintaining all your possessions. People are possessed by their possessions. I'm sure that Thoreau said that, but I can't find the exact quote in his work. But it's true. Things own you. And you have to simplify, simplify, simplify if you want to accomplish things in this life. If you don't care to accomplish things, if you're happy just spending your life maintaining a house, go ahead and do it. But that's not Thoreau. Thoreau, Thoreau is all about keeping things simple and not doing, not investing in more infrastructure than you need. So here's the lake itself. It's a, it's a short distance from the, from the cabin itself. He built his cabin up on a, uh, in a ravine above the lake. But here's the pond itself. If we go down to the shore, we might be able to see the place where I uh, went swimming. Okay, out there is a, a beach house. There used to be dock in front of it. And uh, so we learned to swim in the dock. And uh, I remember my first swimming lessons were learning how to hold your breath. I learned how to hold my breath underwater out here. And uh, I think I came back for one or two summers. Eventually I became a, an advanced intermediate or something like that. And the last thing I remember doing is that we would go way out on the lake uh, where the water was about 15 feet deep and we'd dive down for rocks. So this was once a, a, a swimming hole, local swimming hole. So that's my report from Walden Pond, Concord, Mass. I also have some photos on Facebook. You can check them out. Talk to you later.